Blurry backgrounds, shallow depth of field, bokeh or bokeh seems to be the look that everyone is after these days, especially for their YouTube videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can achieve that look using DSLRs, using video cameras and point and shoot cameras. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm also gonna show you how you can get the best results with your smartphones as well. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we release a ton of content to help you get better results with your videos faster. If you're new here, then make sure you click that big subscribe button and all the links to everything that we're gonna cover in this video, you can find linked in the description below. So let's jump into it. To achieve the blurry background effect, it really comes down to three things. We're gonna start off with a quick overview of each. We'll then show you exactly what you need to do to get an awesome bokeh effect for your camera, including DSLRs and point and shoot cameras. And if you're on a smartphone, the process is a little bit different, but we will be running through some pointers at the end. So make sure you stick around. Okay, so now onto the three things that really determine the level of blurry background effect you can achieve with your camera. The first one is the camera lens and sensor size. Now these two really go hand in hand when it comes to creating that blurry background look. The camera sensor is essentially the receiving element in your camera. It's the part that receives all the light and the, the information, the colors coming through from your camera lens onto the camera sensor where it's processed into an image or a video. So the combination of the amount of light that's coming through your camera lens and is allowed through your camera lens onto your camera sensor will determine the output image or video that you're creating. So without getting too technical, in order to create this blurry background or shallow depth of field, you need to be able to let in as much light as possible into your camera lens onto your camera sensor. So there's two parts to this. You can adjust in most cameras the amount of light that is let in or captured through your camera lens by the camera sensor by an aperture setting that's on your camera lens. The lower the number, the more light that's been let in. The higher the number, the less light that's been let in. So in order to get the blurriest background look or the, or the shallowest depth of field, the first thing to do is to set up your camera roughly in the position where you'd like it and to set your camera to manual mode or to aperture priority mode. And that'll be depending on the options that you've got in your camera. Now you want to adjust your aperture to the lowest number possible for your camera lens. So it could be numbers like four, could be 5.6, could be 2.8, could be 1.4. It'll really depend on your specific camera and camera lens. After you've set your aperture down to the lowest number for your camera and for your camera lens, the next setting to adjust is your shutter speed. Now this is dependent on where you are in the world. If you're in Australia or the UK, then you'll wanna set your shutter speed to 50 or one over 50. If you're in the US, then you'll wanna set it to 60. Now you can also set it to a multiple of that number. So if your shot is too bright, then you can double that so set it to 100 or 120, depending on your region to adjust the brightness of your shot. Once you've got your shutter speed locked down, then you can adjust your ISO. Now this is really the key brightness adjustment for your videos. So the lower the number, the darker the image, the higher the number, the brighter the image. But it is worth noting that the higher the ISO that you use, the higher the chance of digital noise or a grainy image being created by your video. So only go as high as you need to. So to recap quickly, your aperture should be set to the lowest number possible for your lens to create that blurry background look. You can then adjust the brightness of your shot if you're in full manual mode by locking down your shutter speed to either 50 or 100 if you're in Australia or the UK, or 60 or 120 if you're in the US. And then you can adjust the brightness of your video by adjusting the ISO setting. So the lower the number, the 100s, the 200s, the darker the image, the higher the numbers, the 800, the 1600s, the brighter the image. So that's a really quick 101 run through on video camera settings and DSLR camera settings. So number one was the camera lens and the sensor size. Number two is the camera and the talent. So yourself or whoever's on camera, the positioning of both of those. So really what you're looking to achieve here is the greatest amount of distance between the person on camera, the, the talent, yourself, and the background so that there is room for that blur to come into play. But you want as small a distance as possible between the camera and the person on camera. So this will really depend on the camera that you're using on the lens and the zoom and all of that sort of stuff, which we'll get to in a minute. But you want a smaller distance as possible between the camera, the person on camera, with as big a distance as you can between the person and the background. 
Number three is the zoom and focus distance. Now this is another one that's going to be dependent on what camera you're using, what lens you've got. If you've got the room, you can move your camera back further and zoom in and readjust your focus and readjust your, your framing of your shot by zooming in. So zooming in and then reframing and focusing on the person in the shot will give you a greater blur for the background. But that's also really gonna depend on the camera that you're using and whether you've even got a zoom lens or the ability to zoom with the camera you're using. So you can see there really is a combination of those three things to really get that blurry background, shallow depth of field or bokeh look. Now in order to get that blurry background look using a smartphone, it's really important to note that your sensor sizes in your smartphone cameras are much, much smaller than a DSLR and even a point and shoot camera. So you're never gonna be able to achieve the same amount of blur as you would with a actual camera, at least at this point anyway. But what you can do to bring in some blur in the background of your videos using your smartphone, and again, this is really dependent also on which smartphone camera or smartphone you're using, I would suggest that you use the rear camera, the primary camera on your device, and you'll want to increase, again, the distance between the person on camera and the background as much as possible. So if you've got a really big room, then stand right at one side and film with as much room behind you as possible. The next thing that you wanna do is to position yourself as close to the camera as possible. So once again, you've got that great distance behind you and as minimal distance as possible between yourself and the camera lens. Now this is more important with a smartphone than it is with any other type of camera because the focus distance on our smartphone cameras is so small. So the closer that you sit, the closer that you're framing yourself in the shot, the better the blurrier background effect will look. So what that will allow the phone to do is to set the focus point on you instead of the background. With some phones, that means you'll be sitting right up close to the camera to be able to get this look, which means that the total framing of the shot would look way out. You, literally, your head would be filling most of the frame. So you definitely can achieve this look with some smartphones and more so the newer phones than the older ones, but it will really come down to the amount of distance that you've got between yourself and the camera and between yourself and the background elements in your scene. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click that big subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up and check out the video linked on screen now, taking you through the best camera settings for your DSLR, video camera or point and shoot camera. I'll see you soon.